Um, if you're just using chat GBT and hoping that it's going to do all the work for you, um, you're going to get stuck with this subpar content. But when you're using it to, as an addition and as, as a tool, that's when you can start seeing um, some really solid results. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing how to level up your content game with AI. The winning formula, when you're working with AI, what role does AI play in repurposing content efficiently, and how to select the right AI tools for your business. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. And welcome to AI Wednesday and today how to level up your content game with AI. Our guest is the founder of supermarketers.ai. He was previously the co-founder of Prehook, a leading quiz platform for Shopify merchants and he sold that back in 2023. He's led marketing teams as VA of marketing at Jungle Scout and content at scale. He's also been the e-commerce he's also been in e-commerce for 12 years and hosts the AI podcast Super Marketers. Today, please welcome for the first time Jen Furukawa. And we will get to Jen in just one second. We're just going to go to a word from our sponsor. Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viable is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. And sit back, relax. I can't wait to talk about this subject today. So welcome again. Hey, Norm. How are you doing? Good. By the way, I do... thank you for uh, self-correcting the name. I appreciate that. This is also my second time on the show. So I... I... Hopefully we'll make a more lasting impression this time. I think it was like mid pandemic with three hook. Oh my God. Yeah. You're, that's right. But that was way, way, way back. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But oh. I mean, kudos to you for keeping up lunch with Norm for so long. That is not easy. 500 plus episodes. Well, thanks. <laughs> okay. Have you ever come up? I, I, I know this is AI. You know, this is AI Wednesday. But I'm curious because this this was uh, a topic. I didn't even think I was going to publish this one. But uh, have you ever come up with a really tough decision? And you don't know if you're making, even years later, you don't know if you made the right decision. Oh, absolutely. Yeah? yeah absolutely, yeah. Uh, kind of wrestling with that right now. I'm, I'm in Austin and my, my wife was like, oh, maybe we should move somewhere else. But I, I like it here. So who's, who's uh, wishes and priorities take precedence? Uh, yes, yes. Happy wife. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So AI, tell us a little bit of background about, you know, what's going on right now. What are you seeing happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So yeah, just a quick context so people know. So thank you. Uh, I, I was on for Prehook, a, a quiz builder for Shopify merchants, sold it in 2023. We focused on bootstrapping it. We had experience. I was a, a VP of marketing at, at Jungle Scout, um, and that's where I met my co-founders. Uh, we it was important to us to maintain autonomy and ownership, so we didn't want to take outside funding, um, but we did uh, end up selling it. Uh, it was like a six-figure sale. It was you know like good in that sense, but it could have been better. And I think it could have been better if I had leveraged AI and automation more than I did. Uh, so I was doing everything that was customer-facing, from um, marketing, partnerships, affiliate, finance. Um, like customer support, success, all that stuff. Uh, while my co-founders were working on product and dev, um, and so that's why I, I really focused on AI uh, after I, I, I sold it because I realized that I could become so much more uh, resourceful and powerful and, and uh, prolific if I were able to leverage AI in the right ways. Um, so since that time, I focused uh, specifically on AI. I had a short stint at an AI uh, SaaS tool. Uh, called the Continent Scale. Um, I was a VP of marketing there and then uh, left. And now I've been doing uh, AI marketing for B2B SaaS companies. 
Um, but ultimately, it's really just marketing. Um, and AI is just a tool to empower and accelerate the output. Uh, and what I'm seeing now is that there's a lot of a lot of excitement and the, the development and the output truly is remarkable. I mean, like it, the speed with which things are developing is insane. Um, but what, where I think like it can get distracting or harder is trying to keep up with it uh, as opposed to, hey, what am I currently doing? What's like, what are my priorities? What are my marketing uh, strategies that I'm trying to execute on? And then how can I actually like fit in uh, like AI tools to uh, to get more of it? Oh, sorry. I think his uh, internet might have cut out. He should be back soon. Okay. Uh, did did I uh, get cut off or? I uh, no no. It's if you can just continue. I think his uh, computer's just rebooting. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So anyway, that that is where I think AI is. Is it's just in such an exciting time right now. Okay. Great. So. Um, We'll give Norm just a few seconds uh, to get started. Um, in the meantime, for our guests or for our audience listening, if you do have any questions about AI um, during throughout the podcast, uh, please let us know uh, in the comment sections. We're going to get to them in the second half of the episode. And then uh, again, we do have a giveaway today. Do you want to get into what we'll be giving away um, at the end of the episode? Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, really, I, I'm happy to cover anything in this in this um, session. But uh, yeah, I'd love to connect with one person, you know, for you know, a consultation on how you can actually implement AI in your business. So just to be clear, my focus is on uh, inbound demand gen. So that's um, content, email, social, uh, webinars, podcasts, and and so I'm using AI in all of those elements, and. It, uh, I can show you the specific prompts of it, but um, there is uh, there's a lot there, and so I'm happy to share that in a 30 minute call uh, with somebody in the audience. Okay, perfect. So if you are interested uh, in today's Wheel of Kelsey, make sure you write hashtag Wheel of Kelsey uh, in the comment sections. You can see we've got a couple entries already uh, coming in, and we're going to be um, coming to that uh, at the end of the episode. So make sure you get your questions and comments in, and then. Um, go over to that. So um, I'm curious, um, just from my side of things, because we've um, just started the newsletter too. Um, but what made you get into your AI newsletter? Uh, well, it's a couple of things. One, it's like I was learning a lot, but didn't really necessarily have like a, a way that I was sharing it. I was putting out uh, posts on LinkedIn, but that was like a way to crystallize my thoughts into a process. So my, my newsletter is called Supermarketers, and the focus is like applicable ways that you could use AI in your marketing. Uh, and so I use like an acronym of um, like use a strategy, a use case, a prompt, an exercise, and a resource. Um, and it spells super. Uh, but that was just one way like each week. All right, I'm using AI, but how can I actually like make that something that, that other people could benefit from? Um, so it was, it was a thought exercise, a writing exercise, and then of course, um, just building out an email list is um, is critical um, and important. So um, that's that's why. Um, and I do have a lot going on, so I wish I could uh, spend more time specifically because people are doing so well uh, with newsletter specific businesses, um, especially in the AI space, and especially with some of these news news roundup type um, newsletters. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, because uh, it's been a focus of ours. And it, it, I never knew how long it takes to craft a uh, well crafted email correctly and, and give it justice for the readers. So um, yeah, it's, it's been an interest of mine. So it's yeah cool to see someone else that's clearly has a, a great newsletter. Well, so um, how, what's anyways, the process for doing it? Uh, we started out with building out um, kind of what we think people would be interested in relating to the podcast. So obviously like podcast tips and advice. Um, we're always reaching out to our guests as well to see if they can contribute to the newsletter and share their like insights, um, action plans, walkthroughs. Um, but a really interesting idea that actually came from Kevin King was to use Norm stories um, as kind of like a lead and a hook into the newsletters and give some more information about the host of this podcast. 
So uh, Norm basically records these voice memos to me. Probably like we both do it, um, but he's got some really unique stories and we craft those into the newsletters and uh, people have been really receptive to it. Um, he's got some crazy stories um, in his life and we were getting a great response from everyone. And so um, we use it also as a way to give updates and feedback or updates on Amazon and e-commerce updates, and then also um, recaps of the episodes every week too. So there's a bunch of different things that we do. Also like any events that are happening in the Amazon space we promote. And uh, so it's a whole mix of things. It's a pretty long newsletter. Um, I know there's pretty short, concise newsletters out there and ours is definitely on the longer side, but it's a, uh, it's been a fun journey for that. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So uh, I'm going to continue. I think Norm, uh, his computer's just loading. I'm, I can see his messages come in now. Um, but you mentioned uh, in your talking points uh, that you wanted to talk about um, kind of the balance between human and AI and that there's this winning formula. Um, what do you, could you expand a little bit more on what you mean by, um, this balance and this formula that you've created? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I, you know, I like, I'll just say, you know, caveat that I am, I am, I spend a lot of time using AI. Uh, and I honestly don't know if anybody is like a, a full on expert. So I can just share my perspective on how I'm doing it. So I also, I was a, um, I taught a, a course on content and SEO for marketer hire, which is the, uh, the largest, uh, freelance marketplace for digital marketers in the world, um, some of the best uh, content marketers. So I can show um, how I was doing it, but basically um, the, my thought, and this is especially relevant, I think, in light of yesterday's Google update, core update, which basically uh, will is an effort to cut down on spammy content, uh, low quality content, basically mass produced AI content and programmatic content. So, you know, there's this notion in SEO of information gain where things that aren't new knowledge or don't share the eat, the uh, experience, authority, uh, trust, ex experience, expertise, authority, and trust. If you don't incorporate those and you're just kind of like regurgitating content that is already in existence. And that's what uh, these large language models do, because by definition, they are uh, built on the training data of all these uh, million trillions bits of uh, data on the internet. And so it becomes this law of averages uh, where your output becomes the average of uh, what it's been trained on. So I think uh, in light of Google's core update and the changes in, uh, in organic traffic, um, it's more important to incorporate your own personality or your own uh, expertise perspective. Um, and, a, you know, a, a good example might be like a lyrics website. Like if you're looking for Taylor Swift lyrics, you'll see a featured snippet. You'll see the immediate result at the top of the Google SERP. So all these lyric websites or anything that's kind of like just uh, definitive content that's adding no new perspective are going to get hit. So uh, the human element in this is uh, I think the editing process, removing fluff, I think it's it is very evident to see what what words what uh, type of content comes out as ai content and you can always do this uh one tool is originality.ai um, writer.com has one um, there are others out there where you can just drop in your uh your text and then it gives it an assessment of whether it's written by human or ai um, the caveat there is open ai also used to have a, an AI content detector. They deprecated theirs, saying that it was too hard to tell. Um, but who knows? Maybe maybe it will uh, become you know a little bit more important uh, now if there's this influx of content. So anyway, uh, yeah, maybe I, I'm happy to share the the process of how to create the content. Um, but yeah, I, I think it goes without saying that unless you're doing programmatic SEO which is where you have like a templatized style of a page. Um, Yelp does this, Canva does this, you know, as an example, um, let's take Zapier as an example. They've done a lot with programmatic SEO, you know, like um, we're, on, we're on StreamYard and Zoom integrations with, you know, and so it's basically taking this plus this is the page. And if you're doing that, you know, where it's uh, replica replicatable, 
over thousands of pages. That's what programmatic SEO is. That might be okay um, if you're kind of like adding new information or insights. Um, but in general, I think all SEO content, if you want to um, kind of like infuse your brand in it, it is ideal to have a human review it and edit it. Yeah, uh, I'm actually in talks with um, someone, uh, original, originality.ai. Um, I'm hoping to get him on the podcast um, for- Oh, nice, like, Jonathan a, a great episode for that. Yeah, yeah, so hopefully oh, we yeah, can get I, him I had him on my podcast last week. Oh, awesome, nice. Yeah, so i um, excited to get that going, but I think it, it's really important, and I'm, I'm sure everyone in the audience right now has received a chat GBT kind of email where you can instantly find out that or you, there's tells that it's it's written by chat or chat GPT. Um, even like titles, I, I notice whenever people use like maximizing or unlocking, those are just like instant yeah. tells that those are chat GPT. And you can kind of get stuck in this mediocrity, I think, um, if you're not adding any additional information to it, especially from my side of content, uh, organic content. Um, if you're just using chat GBT and hoping that it's going to do all the work for you, um, you're going to get stuck with this subpar content, but when you're using it to, as an addition and as, as a tool, that's when you can start seeing, um, some really solid results. Um, we do have some questions here that I, I want to get into. And I think they're pretty important, um, from Trevor, uh, he's asking what was the best way you really got your feet wet with AI? I'm just getting started with ChatGPT and it's blowing my mind. Do you have any uh, AI tools that you recommend? Yeah. Um, so, uh, oh, well, oh. hey, Trevor. Sorry, oh. I'm used to removing myself from the conversation. Oh, no worries. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, yeah, so I I subscribe to uh, ChatGPT. Um, so GPT-4, I think, is worth it for sure. Um, and in doing so, I think the, the, the benefit of chat GPT is that you get custom GPT. So you can create your own bot. Maybe we can do this later, um, where it's trained on your specific data. And that's where you can get a lot more, a better output refined to your particular needs, um, based on what your, what your goal is. So for example, if you're, uh, an email marketer for a, um, like a, a pet food brand, for example, um, you can create your, uh, ideally you're going to assign it a role. Uh, you know, you are an email copywriter. Your focus is on creating compelling content. You use these copywriting frameworks. The brand that you're selling is this, the benefits are that, uh, the type of audience that you're trying to reach is this, and then you're going to give it some examples. So that's called, um, few shot prompts where you're giving it examples. I think that really might be the best way in order to. Uh, to get the ideal output that you're looking for, as opposed to say a zero shot prompt, which is just, um, hey, write me a blog, uh, write me an email to uh, to announce the launch for a new flavor for dog food. Like you're really not giving it an idea of what parameters you're looking for, the tone, uh, the style, the the layout, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's at a high level, I think, how you can um, get more out of ChatGPT, um, and really just like thinking about what you, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then really, I think anything that you do can be uh, augmented with AI. So uh, for me, I do a lot of uh, a lot in front of the computer in, in terms of uh, writing or research. Um, so I will uh, I will use ChatGPT. There are other tools. And um, so I like perplexity a lot. Uh, so perplexity.ai, uh, what I like about that is it's, it's kind of like known as an answer engine as opposed to a search engine. So Google, you could say, you know, how do, how do I increase my email open rates? As an example, uh, if you go to Google, maybe you get a featured snippet. Now they're doing their uh, uh, search generative experience which, where it might outline what the answers are. Um, but perplexity will give you the answers directly. So it's like a chat bot, but it gives you answers. And then it also gives you citations. So uh, you, if you want to dig in more, you can click on on the footnotes, um, the footers, and then go directly to that link. Uh, so you can learn more. Uh, I also find it very helpful for finding additional elements to improve your content. So it could be tables, charts, graphs, um, statistics, anything. Um, you can use perplexity for that. Uh, and then perplexity, you can also narrow your focus. So you can search strictly for Reddit 
posts, strictly for YouTube videos, strictly for um, academic uh, papers, whatever it is. So perplexity is great for that. Claude, I think, um, is really good for copywriting, claude.ai. Um, and so I think like the output that you get in terms of copywriting with Claude is, a, is the best. And then Gemini, I use Gemini and I, so all these, I, I pay 20 bucks for, I think it's, it's, you know, maybe some overlap, but I think it's totally worth it. Um, and Gemini is great because I think the, uh, the answers are really good. And then, um, uh, it integrates with your Google suite. So you can say, you know, like, Hey, uh, find me my email with Kelsey and tell me like, what time was the, the lunch with Norm today? Or, you know, something like that. So you can kind of like query your own uh, docs, sheets, Gmail, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think those are some AI tools uh, that the, the more general one, general ones, um, specific to um, image. I, I also pay for MidJourney. I think like you can get Dolly 3 in, in OpenAI or, you know, Bing Chat. Uh, but I, I do like the output of Midjourney. It has a slight learning curve, but it's great. Um, and then I've been playing with text to video as well. Um, Eleven Labs is so. So the way it works is like Eleven Labs is like text to voice, and then you can overlay that voice. So it could be like you know I, I would just upload like just a minute of me talking about anything, and it would train the a voice specifically on me and my voice. And then you can overlay that to um, to like some B-roll or other video. Um, you know, Pictory is one or Synthesia. Anyway, so there are. Uh, I think that's that's really interesting in terms of uh, AI tools. Um, but you know, these days every every company is infusing AI in some sort in some way. So uh, all these companies, you know, like even Clavio now announced their AI AI feature um, last week. So every company is an AI company yeah i'm noticing that too every every single company has an, an ai feature now um yeah and i think um just for someone starting out too um getting your feet wet just play around with it um i like your idea of you know writing out your tasks and figuring out those those different things you do from your day to day so write those out see what is listed and what can be taken away from that and kind of implement it into AI and uh, go from there. So uh, we had Saj from Skill Leap AI on, uh, I guess it was maybe three or four months ago. And he said the first thing people should just try out is writing emails with it. So not having ChatGPT write the emails, but using ChatGPT to edit <clears throat> um, with grammar and um, changing the tones and seeing ways to improve uh, your emails. And that's just a quick way to like, get used to it and then if you are interested in learning more there's these resources like gen's newsletter uh, his podcast um skill leap from saj adib who's been on the podcast before but um just start playing around with it and um again you uh have prompts frameworks and your processes um in, that you're going to be sharing with everyone so do you want to talk a little bit about what people can find um in your link yeah, sure. So um, at a high level, this is like how I I found like the best process to create content with AI. And like we started off with, it's not like you just because if you want to do AI generated content, and again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You could just go to like, a, you know, a, a byword or a content at scale, upload your list of keywords, and then boom, you get like, um, you get your results. But I don't think that that's really great. My, my experience with that is that it's a um, it's kind of like a very thin piece of content that's not really uh, substantive or helpful. Um, and so the the framework that I've uh, worked on and created is basically uh, working on uh, understanding what is ranking well. So uh, it starts once you have your list of keywords that you're going to target. And once you do have that list of keywords um, and it's prioritized and you have it based on intent and, and search volume and keyword difficulty, um, then you're ready to start creating the content. Now you wouldn't necessarily want to um, just create a content uh, like based on that keyword alone. Ideally, you want some context of what the search engine results page looks like and why certain pages are ranking well. So uh, in that framework, you can understand um, what, uh, how to extract the SEO elements of the top ranking pages. 
how to create an outline with that data, and then how to actually create a piece of content that actually um, addresses each of those so that you're getting the best, uh, best possible output. Um, so again, that's like kind of the combination of the human input with uh, AI to do some of the heavy lifting in terms of research and writing. OK, perfect. So if you are interested, uh, I dropped the links in the comment sections that you can grab those uh, from. And we are getting a lot of questions, which is great. Um, before we get into those, I just want to remind everyone that there is a giveaway today. Uh, Ken's giving away a free consultation to a lucky winner. So if you are interested in, uh, please let us know. Uh, just write hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, as you can see Trevor did on the screen here uh, in the comment sections. And we're going to um, spin the wheel at the end of the episode. So if you do have questions, comments, let us know uh, in the comment sections. Uh, again, I'm just going to do a quick ad read, and then we'll get back into uh, the episode. And let's see. All right. So we have Seller Basics joining us. Um, just give me a second. All right. Hey, Amazon sellers ever faced with account suspensions, ASIN hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing Seller Basics. It's your Amazon account guardian. Uh, with just $99 a month, Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your businesses from these challenges. Plus, this membership offers free legal consultations from seasoned e-commerce attorneys. No long-term contracts. Cancel with just a month's notice. View your Seller Basics as your Amazon account's health plan. Check it out at sellerbasics.com. Uh, there is a disclaimer. Uh, Seller Basics is not an insurer or law firm. Consultations come from independent firms, and results can vary. Membership is needed before the events leading to claims and terms apply. All right, so we're going to grab Ken back. And um, all right, so again, I know um, we had, you, we're going to talk about your uh, kind of content workflow. Do you want to get into um, what exactly you, you plan out and the workflow that you do um, when it comes to content? Yeah, so. Uh, it starts with like a content strategy. So this is another great use case of um, how to use AI. So uh, it, you can use, I, I guess a lot of people have their own brand as an example. Um, so you might want to uh, use AI, ChatGPT or uh, Gemini to understand like what that content strategy would look like. So um, you can, you can uh, use, basically use a prompt. I think I have it in the opt-in uh, to understand all right, who is my target audience? What are their uh, their fears, their frustrations, their challenges, their goals? Then you're actually getting into the psyche of it. Maybe you're asking, uh, where do they get their information? Um, and so you can ask these specific questions to understand your demographic, not just, or your, your target audience, not just in the demographic sense of, you know, age, gender, uh, location, but also the psychographics of what uh, what their psychology is, um, what are the pain points and how you can insert yourself as a brand to uh, to kind of like bridge the gap from where they currently are to where they want to go. AI is is actually really good at this because this is something that would take um, a lot of time, effort and some uh, some assumptions. Uh, granted, it's not perfect if you're using AI, but like the, the level of detail is super helpful. So that's really like a good place to start with uh, content strategy. And then from there, you can actually use um, whether you're using AI tools to understand uh, what the content clusters are, the high level topics. Um, and then from there, I'd go more specific keywords and then the long tail keywords. Um, so a couple of ways that I, I do do this where you can uh, uncover some good keywords, uh, keywordtools.io is good. Um, and, and so there you can just get a list of keywords, question based keywords. Um, uh, what is it? So ask Socrates, uh, answer Socrates.com, um, which is very similar to answer the public. Um, and then there are the pay tools, say a SEMrush or an Ahrefs. Once you have your specific keywords, you can just filter. And so you'd want to filter for like, say keyword difficulty below, you know, it depends on what your site is. Say, um, you want all the search queries that you've already done the research on your, this is from your whole universe of potential keywords you'd want to write, um, target uh, keyword difficulty below say 30 and the search volume over hundred or whatever it is. You can um, kind of like play with what those numbers are. And then what your output is, is these are kind of like low hanging fruit, so to speak, where 
um, it's not necessarily hard to rank for because the other uh, the other sites or um, domains that are targeting that keyword, maybe they have a, a low uh, domain rating, or maybe they are not necessarily targeting that keyword specifically, uh, whatever it is, but that's where the human element of research comes in. Uh, and then you would actually just go through the process of uh, researching that particular keyword, drafting it out section by section. So that's another key thing that I didn't mention earlier is you really want to uh, focus on uh, doing, uh, writing each one in, because I think with the AI tools, the smaller and more specific the prompt, the better the output. Um, so that's why you want to start with, hey, just write this uh, intro introduction section, don't write any more. Just write the following paragraph, don't write any more. And so you're going, uh, and then maybe you, you're doing five, seven, 10 sections, and then you're combining it all together. I really like that, because um, we, we actually did get a question about um, laying out your information if there's too much. So Trevor is asking, uh, is it possible to have too much information in a prompt? Uh, what scenarios do you find less is more? And I know um, with AI, I think it's AI Drift, where uh, ChatGPT kind of goes away from your answer a little bit, and sometimes you have to rein it back in to answer it. So um, what do you think, Ken? Yeah, yeah, I, I do agree with this. Um, and so I've had, like, I created custom GPTs and I would, like, give it all this, like, uh, the, the documents of, like, this is what I want it to be. This is, like, the ideal output. This is, you know, like, overloading it with data just because you could. Um, and so I think it was too much. And what actually is better in terms of getting the ideal output is just uploading or sharing examples. So in the prompt, you can you can say like you know if you are writing writing a blog post or you're you're doing organic social um you can whether you're using your own or and you can like define it based on the style the tone the words the um other elements of it or you can just find a competitor or somebody that you really like share that and then you can actually reverse engineer how it's being done so uh, you can ask you know whatever your tool is uh, please describe this uh, this style of writing. Uh, give me all the details of the format, the you know all all these things, and then so it would actually tell you that this writing is concise, professional, friendly, um, short and to the point. Paragraphs don't have more than two sentences. Blah blah blah. And so that becomes like part of your prompt, as well as uh, including the specific example itself. And from, from that, you can probably get a lot of, um, you can get close to the mark in what you're looking for. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. Thank you, Trevor, for the questions. Uh, we got a, a lot of questions coming in from the audience too. So, uh, just a reminder with our hashtag wheel of Kelsey, uh, right. Hashtag wheel of Kelsey in the comment sections. Uh, if you would like to enter, today's prize, and that is to win a consultation with Gen. Um, go over your strategy, um, maybe ways to um, that AI can help you in your business. And we we're talking about ranking and, and content strategies. Uh, and this is from Alejandro. Uh, are there any other ways to improve SEO and rank brands or products higher in Google and Bing? Um, anything come uh, on? Yeah, so this is here I can. Um... This is I, I did cover this in the, the course, um, but yes, there are ways that you could use uh, AI to do this. So you can actually um, upload internal links. So internal links uh, improve the user experience, um, but then also like signify to, to Google. And um, I don't know if you're talking about uh, Amazon stuff as well, but um, you can add internal links. So um, you could take like part of your sitemap or some of the most uh, trafficked pages on your website. And then um, once you have your draft, say, you know, use these, um, in, add these uh, internal links um, and use relevant uh, anchor text or whatever. Um, and then you can have it right in, in Markdown. Um, and so that's another helpful tool. Another helpful free tool is um, Markdown to HTML. So if you get your output in Markdown, um, which is just basically like another HTML is how things get published on the web. So if you copy and paste into your content management system, it will, if it's in HTML, it'll appear properly. 
if it if it's in markdown it will not you have to convert it from markdown to html so markdown to html what is it uh markdown to html.com um if you are getting all your output in markdown um is how you convert it to html um, but what i was saying is you can just upload your internal links and then just have uh your ai insert the internal links in the appropriate places that make sense uh with anchor text that makes sense so that's that's one thing um that would be helpful um then helping with the metadata so uh if you tell the ai that you're targeting a particular keyword um you know write write an optimized um title meta description url slug for the particular keyword um, and you can also just uh, give it some examples of um, top ranking posts uh, for that particular keyword. You know, maybe you're like, write something about this, or I also just like to ask for, uh, for like five or, or 10, maybe using different frameworks or something. Perfect. So I, I know there's a lot of information in that. So make sure you, you go back and, and replay this episode uh, a couple of times. And, and if you do have questions, chat GBT and these AI tools can help you actually teach you how to do certain things. Um, but you do want to make sure that the information, the information isn't always a hundred percent, right? Um, so you have to be careful and do your due diligence, um, reading through any copy that's created, um, which takes me to our next question about, uh, and, and then one thing I should mention there is also like perplexity as well for, for the images, stats, tables, graphs, other elements that are important, visual elements that are important to the user experience, but then also um, SEO. Perfect. Um, did you uh, do you have any focus on uh, Amazon specific, like uh, about like Amazon Rufus or? Um, no, I, I, I have not not used it. Okay, so um, Rad, I saw your question about this. Um, Amazon just came out with, uh, I believe, a new language model called. Cosmo that was just released, I think, like yesterday. Um, check out uh, Max Sinclair's episode on Lunch with Norm. It happens last Wednesday. Um, he goes into depth about Amazon's Rufus. And we also have Joe um, coming back on the podcast next Wednesday. And she's going to be touching more about Rufus and um, how that can help you with your uh, Amazon business. So check that out. And let me see. Um, so. Again, obviously there's a lot of tools out there. Um, people probably have shiny object syndrome. Um, it could rack up really quickly on the amount of tools that you're subscribing to, just the amount of money that you're paying. Um, how should sellers think about picking the right tools, um, paying for tools? Is there kind of a process you do to finding the right tools that are gonna actually help with your business instead of maybe impede or just cost you money? Yeah. Uh, so for, for e-commerce sellers and in particular, Amazon, I mean, like I said, I, I was, uh, led the marketing team at jungle scout for a while until 2019. Um, I, I think like that's a, a critical tool, um, or any other tool. I mean, I, I guess helium 10 is a competitor, but, uh, having that data driven approach of like actually optimizing or, or getting data behind the products that you're going to sell. Um, so it doesn't need to be like AI per se, because I think all those tools have incorporated some AI elements of like a product description optimization tool or something, paid ads. Um, but yeah, I mean, like where where the biggest lift could potentially be. So if paid ads is critical, you know, there's adcreative.ai uh, to help you kind of like create more creatives faster. Or there's, you could even use, uh, advanced data analysis. It was called Code Interpreter to analyze your your paid uh, data. So you know maybe you're seeing like where there are keywords that have uh, an outsized um, click through rate for the cost, or maybe have a higher conversion rate. Uh, and there are kind of like nuanced, smaller patterns that would be very hard to identify, but with AI you could. Um, so yeah, I mean maybe it's it's thinking about where the uh, greatest points of leverage are and then how you could use AI um, to do so to, to kind of like improve it. And it doesn't necessarily need to be an expensive tool because uh, these, you know, gen kind of like generic tools, ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini are, are really powerful. 
Okay, awesome. So I hope that helps, uh, Trevor. And uh, this is a great question from Alejandro. Um, can AI reliably judge whether content is AI generated? Or uh, sorry, uh, we already touched on that. Um, this one here uh, from Trevor. Uh, really look forward to trying these. Could perplexity answer general legal advice for compliance with copy? I'm looking to help my listings avoid geographic restrictions to products on Amazon. Uh, I, well, I don't think perplexity would answer it itself, but you can ask and then it can give a, it can kind of like point you in the right direction. Um, and then so you can follow the trail because uh, it would give you um, citations or, or uh, the links ideally. Actually, and I don't know if perplexity has, if you could focus based on legal, uh, but I, let's see, um, I guess not. Um, so yeah, that, that's a that's a tough one. Um, I would say maybe it could be like a starting point, a good starting point for sure. And it's free. Uh, I paid for perplexity for a little while. Um, don't pay for it anymore. But if you pay 20 bucks a month for perplexity, uh, the nice thing is you can use um, Claude, uh, ChatGBT, or um, uh, another, I think another tool for writing the output. Uh, so you can choose your model. So that's another hack to save 20 bucks. All right, awesome. And for general legal advice, um, not to shamelessly plug our sponsor, but Seller Basics is a really great tool, or not tool, but um, service that is it's ninety nine dollars a month. But we have a code that you can get another ten dollars a month, but or ten dollars a month off. Um, check it out. We have had Paul Raffleson on before, who's kind of went in depth on um, Seller Basics and what you can do, but. Basically, it's a month-to-month -month consultation. Um, you can get this advice from a lawyer and learn from that. Um, you don't have to. It's it's not thousands of dollars. It's it's not necessarily a retainer, um, but it's a great service that you can. It's an affordable way um, to make sure that you know something doesn't bite you <laughs> in the future uh, on this. So. Uh, I would reach out if you would like an introduction, just let me know and I can reach out to Paul for you so you can learn more and if it's the right fit for you. Um, but if not, um, you know, uh, you can you can do whatever you want, uh, but I do recommend because with those services, if something happens and then you go into the, the that service after it happens, then they can't really help you. It has to be um, proactive. So uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left um, and just one more question from our audience. Uh, could Gen please share the prompt to determine the demographics of our brand? Do you have any uh, tips on that? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, I think I wrote, go to newsletter.supermarketers.ai. Yeah, that was the last one that I wrote, how to create the ideal customer profile. Um, the prompt is in there. So you can just pretty much copy and paste there. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to grab that quickly. I had a multitask here. Um, so let me see. Um, and we just got about maybe five, two or three more minutes until we're going to be doing our giveaway. So make sure you get your um, your hashtag Wheel of Kelsey inside there. And let me see. From Facebook, you use a Copilot Pro from Microsoft that uses ChatGPT. T4 and Google's Gemini are great investments. They per pay for themselves. So thank you for that recommendation. And here is the link to supermarketers.ai. So check that out. And um, again, any uh, last words of wisdom um, that you could uh, give to anyone, any actionable steps that you think people should take um, on their content AI journey? Yeah, um, probably. Starting like if there are things that you do over and over, I would maybe create your own custom GPTs. Uh, and so there's no coding necessary. Um, just on the on the left of uh, you have to you have to be GPT four, I believe, to uh, to access this, which is twenty bucks. Uh, but then you can create your own custom GPT where you're giving it custom instructions. So so say like you know you're giving it a role. You are an e-commerce email marketer. You, you're giving it more background. Um, and then from there, you can uh, you can do these, you know, just use a GPT for the task of like create an outline for this week's email on Amazon update changes or whatever. 
then you can actually, you can call your GPTs in the same thread with just the at symbol. So then say you have like a copy editor GPT that you've created and you've uh, trained it on the specific outline, the structure, the tone that you want. Um, maybe say, you know, this is a real use case for me is like, I have one brand that like is specific around how e-commerce is spelled, capital E, lowercase c, you know, and, and so GPTs, like they, they'll all have different uh, ways of spelling it. And that could just be one custom instruction in the copy editor. But the point is you can just do the at symbol and then you're changing GPTs in the same thread in chat GPT. So basically, you know, you can create your own marketing team or your own team of whatever it is that you need. Uh, and so I think that's like a really helpful way to a, like think about what your needs are, B like write it down so you can use it continuously and then see like, just kind of like with a one keystroke, you're able to like get these AI agents to help you. Awesome. I think you outlined that perfectly. So uh, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, contact information. How can people get a hold of you or check out your newsletter? Um, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like um, the newsletter is, I, I send it out every Friday and I focus on uh, including actionable strategies to use AI as marketers. Um, and I always include uh, the prompt to help you do it. Um, and so, yeah, I, th I think probably like signing up there and, and then uh, feel free to connect on LinkedIn as well. Just Gen Furukawa uh, on LinkedIn. would love to chat. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna go head over to the wheel and see who today's winner is. So let's see. It's time for the Wheel of Elsie. All right, so we do this uh, giveaway every single podcast, and thank you everyone for entering today's giveaway. Uh, if you are the winner, please email me k at lunchwithnorm.com, and let's see who today's winner is. Alejandro, uh, perfect. So I think you're gonna learn a lot, Alejandro. So if you could email me k at lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll connect you with Gen uh, directly, and. Uh, Thanks everyone for joining again. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. My apologies for uh, Norm's internet. It looks like yeah. you got cut out and uh, thank you for sticking around. And Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.